Have you been toying with the idea of starting a meditation practice, but you've been putting it off because you have no idea where to begin? Watch this video and I will give you some tips that will help you to get started with your own mindfulness meditation practice. Hi, my name is Dr. Patricia Thompson. I'm a corporate psychologist and executive coach. I'm also the creator of the Executive Mindfulness Online course, where I walk you through all sorts of meditations and the value and how to apply mindfulness to your work as a professional. And in my work as an executive coach, one of the things that I have found is that a lot of people have heard of the idea of mindfulness, and they might have even decided that, yeah, I really should start meditating. Um, but a lot of times it stays in the should start meditating state and people never actually get to actually creating a meditation practice. So in this video, I wanted to share some tips that I share with a lot of my clients who are kind of on the verge of deciding that they want to start meditating um, so that we can get them over the hump from desire to actually practicing it to realizing that it's something that they totally, totally can do. Um, in the meantime, before I get to the tips, make sure to like and subscribe. Please comment down below if I share anything in the video that resonates with you, or if it gives you ideas of perhaps other videos that you would like for me to make. Um, and you can find more about me at silverliningpsychology.com. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, so my first tip that I give clients is to start small. Um, I think that one of the things that can make meditation seem really daunting to people is the idea that they need to go off, set aside, you know, 30 minutes or an hour and have that time spent in quiet contemplation or having their minds supposedly blank. And for a lot of people, that just seems like too much, like something that they could never do. And so as a result, they don't even get started. And so what I recommend is commit to starting small, commit to doing five minutes a day, or if that's too much, you know, three minutes a day. What you want to do is just be able to dip your toe in the water and get started with it. And then you get to feel like you're having wins because you're sitting there successfully for your three or your five minutes. And that makes you want to do a little bit more. And you've also picked up the skill to be able to do it. So start small, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day um, and set an achievable, realistic goal for yourself in terms of what you're going to aim for in terms of your meditation practice. My second tip is to commit to a routine. Now, not everybody can do this. If your life is erratic or, you know, if you have toddlers running around the house, this can be harder to do. But to the extent that you're able to, we know that it's easier to develop any habit, whether it's meditating or going to the gym or brushing your teeth if you do it at the same time every day. So think about your schedule and think about when you could get in time for that five minutes, whether it's, you know, first thing upon waking up or perhaps when you get home from work, if you go out to an office to de-stress or if you're working at home, you know, when you close your computer, deciding when you're going to do it, Putting that on your calendar as an appointment with yourself is something that will also increase the odds that you'll move from, I should do this, to I'm totally doing this. Okay, so then once you have actually set that time aside, you decide I'm gonna do my five minutes, I'm gonna do it at X time during the day, what do you actually do when you sit down to meditate? Now, a lot of people have the misconception that meditation is making your mind go blank, and again, they might have tried it, they had thoughts that came, and as a result, they decided that they weren't good meditators. <laughs> so um, the first thing I wanna say is when you go to sit down to meditate, don't have any preconceived notions about what should happen. If you sit down for the five minutes and you made the effort to do it, then consider it a win, give yourself a gold star. <laughs> But um, in terms of what people typically do when they're getting started with a meditation practice, they will either soften their eyes and focus on something 
like with a soft focus so sometimes people will gaze at a candle or just gaze softly at something in front of them um, I typically find it easier to do with my eyes closed and then what you're gonna do is just try to focus in a classic sense on your breathing um, because when you focus on your breathing it's something that's a constant stimulus and it's something that's always there and it's something that kind of gives your mind something to do and so when you focus on your breathing you could focus on the inhale and on the exhale and just notice that process over inhale and the exhale and that's it <laughs> that's really it um, sometimes what people might do is they might count their breaths to give them something to do, their mind something to do. So you could count one on the inhale and one on the exhale. And then you might do that up to five. And then you could start over at one again. So that could be something that you do. Sometimes people might just give themselves a little mantra, whether it's like inhale, exhale, or, you know, peace or you know, whatever speaks to you. Um, but again, the classic way to get started would be just to focus on your breathing as a really simple method of starting to meditate. The next really essential part of meditation is to have an attitude of non-judgment, meaning that you're not judging the experience. So if you were to start counting your breaths and then you started thinking about your, I don't know, grocery list, you wouldn't say to yourself, wow, I am terrible at, or at um, meditation. No, you would just notice what happened and focus back on your breathing. That's it, no judgment. Then again, if you were like really good at noticing your breathing, really good at it, you wouldn't think, wow, I'm awesome at meditation because that would be making a judgment too. So really you're just noticing whatever's happening kind of in a soft judgment, uh, not judgment, in a soft noticing, almost like a curious scientist who's just noticing what's happening, but not making any judgments about it one way or the other. If you're in pain, let's say that you were sitting cross-legged and you realize that your hips are a little tight for that, just notice the pain. Don't even judge it as bad. Yeah, you might want to, you know, reposition yourself, but the point is that you're just kind of having the soft awareness, a soft noticing of what's happening, but don't add on any judgment to the equation. Okay, and then what do you do when thoughts come up? Because I can assure you that they will. And that doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. It just means that you're a human. You're a human being, you have a brain, brains think that's what they do. So again, this is where the spirit of non-judgment comes in. All you wanna do is notice that your attention has wandered and then you're gonna bring it back to your breathing or your counting or whatever it is that you've been focusing on. And then your brain will go off during another path. And then when you notice that that's happened, simply notice it and then gently bring it back. Um, you know, sometimes some analogies help. So, you know, sometimes I'll hear, um, you know, one that I like is imagine your thoughts just as like leaves going down a stream and you don't have to engage them. You can let them continue to go down the path or you could see them as like emails that come in, um, maybe junk mail that you choose not to open and engage with. So you just notice that you have a thought and then you get back to what you're doing, but expect it's very likely that you're going to have thoughts come up and that doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. It just means that you're a human being who's meditating. The last thing that can be really helpful are guided meditations. Um, and those are when someone walks you through what to do and what to think about when you're meditating. Uh, you know, sometimes people like to use quiet music or they could use white noise, like, you know, a fan sound, or, you know, you can get, sounds of the beach or streams, things along those lines. Or you could have someone walking you through a meditation, walking you through the breathing, walking you through what you're attending to. And that can be really, really helpful as you're getting started. Um, and so 
if doing it on your own isn't something that appeals to you, then definitely look into some guided meditations. Um, I'm going to leave a link to one that I've created in the links below so that you can try that one out as well. But that's another really um, helpful way to get started. Okay, so that's it for some meditation tips for you. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I have a course called the Executive Mindfulness Online Course where I get a lot deeper into how you can apply the principles of mindfulness beyond just creating a meditation practice, but kind of approaching your life and work in a mindful way. Um, so I encourage you to check that out again in my courses link below. Um, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell, and I will see you in the next video.